there was a bad relationship and he can lie to the public and lie to in interviews and whatnot but This is Jonathan Aguilar for Pro Boxing Fans, joined by Chantel Cameron. Uh, I'm not going to say former because uh, I know you, you don't like hearing that, but it's true, <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, big big day, uh, big shock to a lot of people uh, that you signed with uh, Queensbury Promotions, Frank Warren. Uh, what, what do you think they can can bring to you in in this stage of your career? I think the I think it's about to I think my career is really about to take off now. I think obviously I've become undisputed, which is amazing. But I feel like with Frank's back in now, TNT's back in, and under the Queensbury banner, I feel like this is going to be the best years now to come. You've achieved what most people would say is like a dream beyond a dream, but you still seem to have that competitiveness in, in you. What What is it like the goals over the next few years under Frank? Do you know, I feel like sometimes losing maybe is a blessing because, like I said, I will come undisputed and I beat Katie Taylor and it's kind of all I set my ambitions on was those two things to prove to everyone that I can beat Katie and I achieved winning all the belts in the division. But took that loss and I kind of think maybe it's a reason because now it's completely changed my mindset whereas now like I'm frustrated I'm angry I took a loss and I'm here to prove a point now and I feel like uh, this is going to be the is this going to bring the best out of me and I think Frank and TNT understand how much I want them belts back and they're going to get behind me to push me to get in position again to have the opportunity so I think this is just literally an unbelievable move that I've made and good things are coming Were you disappointed that the, the KE trilogy didn't happen? Yeah, it was absolutely heartbroken to be honest because that's all I wanted. It was one apiece, took my first loss against Katie and I wanted to put them wrongs right but I didn't get the chance and Katie could have made that fight Katie, Katie could have made that fight happen. It was in Katie's hands, like she made the first fight happen, the second fight happen and she wasn't even in talks with Amanda Serrano at this point when she did say she didn't want the trilogy. She just said she wanted an easier fight, which that's her that's her choice, her path and her decision. But at the same time it's just a bit of a bit of, bit of pill to swallow because she beat me and I, I I had to go back to Ireland and give her another chance because I was in contract. But tables turned when it was for Katie because obviously Katie calls all the shots. Oh thank you. Uh, yeah, probably needed done a lot of interviews there. So when you didn't get that trilogy, was that what prompted you to maybe say, look, I need a change in, in my career, fresh, like freshen up kind of thing? I feel like in November, people don't see the behind the scenes and uh, they just see the fight. And there was a lot of people on online saying, oh, she's moaning, she's whinging, blah, blah, blah. But they don't see what happens behind the closed doors and all the rest of it. So then people with opinions haven't, but you don't know the full story. So kind of like... It just shut up kind of thing and uh, it was kind of it was it was just a very toxic night it was just a toxic night and the right thing for me to do was part ways and it was mutual as well like they I think they knew that, that there was a relationship breakdown they are doing great things for me become undisputed headline at O2 and I'm so grateful for that but when your time's up your time's up and it was time for something new and there's no bad feeling I think everything happens for a reason and now I'm just delighted that I'm with somebody that I wanted to be with and somebody that it's going to appreciate me a bit as well. I know, uh, you know, Matram said it was amicable and you feel the same, but uh, Eddie did say that uh, he feels like you don't really appreciate uh, the job, you know, you still feel disappointed at the job they've done for you and, you know, people look at it and say they did deliver you uh, the undisputed fight, paid you a lot of money. Uh, is he fair to say that and, you know, would you agree? No, he's completely wrong. I'm very grateful for the opportunities I got, but there was a bad relationship and he can lie to the public and lie to in interviews and whatnot, but then today he knows there's bad feeling and certain stuff that went on where he knew that he was in the wrong with things and uh, I'm not going to hold it against him because then today it is business, but um, he p it's painting the wrong narrative again. I feel like that's all that's been done with Matt Room. There's certain situations where I took a load of shit online where he could have literally had my back 
and he decided not to when he knew that how can I be calling shots in other people's careers when I'm not even calling shots in my own careers whereas people if people put that together they would understand and be like you know what she's got a fair point if I'm not calling shots in my own career how am I getting people kicked off cards and nonsense like that where all that stuff that did it did hurt me and I was I got, I got along very well with Ellie and class was a friend so uh, I was gutted with that and I was I took it quite bad because it was so like frustrating that I, I could went in I went in telling people my point because I was in the biggest fight of my life having to deal with all that prepare for the fight and it was just it was crazy I think even Shane said he knew that it wasn't me that got her kicked off the card but still like Eddie could have had my back a bit but he decided not to so things like that are quite damaging like it's just quite hurtful so well moving uh, to a bit more positive uh, obviously <laughs> obviously uh, f you know Frank and Eddie do have a relationship now where they're doing fights against each other and some people I said to Frank do you think you know if you were ma able to make you and Katie for a third fight yeah and it is Matron versus Queensbury that kind of adds a bit more sort of you know hype to the fight obviously we know it's going to be a good fight anyway but do you sort of look at it that way and say you know a fight within a uh, Matron fight can still happen even if you're not with him yeah definitely with Frank and Eddie working together now obviously I'll have Frank in my corner Kate will have Eddie in her corner and it kind of make it a bit neutral as well I'll have a promoter back in me she'll have a promoter back in her and uh, I think it'll be completely different fights because it's one apiece and it, it's, if, if we ever fight again, which I'll be, I'll be very hopeful for, it will, I'm, I'm getting the win regardless. And uh, obviously she's got a big fight, uh, the rematch uh, with Serrano coming up. Uh, how do you think that's going to go and how did you sc score the first fight? So the first fight I actually scored Amanda. I thought Amanda had done enough to win. Great fight, so entertaining and what a credit to both women putting women's boxing on the map like that. It was unbelievable and that fight again is going to go down in history where people are always going to re-watch that. But uh, I did have Amanda, Amanda winning. But the second fight, uh, gutted that it's not going to be three minute rounds. Obviously, Amanda's a massive advocate for three minute rounds, but I think I've seen something where Katie just wants two minute rounds. So I think uh, that's a bit of a difference, but I do think I'm going to edge, and people think I'm saying this being a bit about Katie, but I'm just going on about sharing the ring with Katie and kind of think she's. I took, she's had two bad fights for me, and I think I took her so. So I'm going to say Amanda win. And uh, if Amanda does win the fight, that surely you won that fight, right? I'm a massive, massive fan of Amanda. Huge fan, great fighter. But if she has the 140 belts and should allow me to have the opportunity to fight for them, I'd absolutely love that and it'll be an honour. And uh, just, just finishing off, uh, we've got a big undisputed fight coming up uh, between Fury and Usyk. Uh, how do you think that fight's going to play out? So I'm a massive fan of both fighters, but I think Tyson Fury will win. Do you think he can stop Usyk, or do you think, given Usyk's experience, he'll, he'll be able to last the distance? I definitely think he'll go the distance. Mm. All right, uh, Chantel, appreciate your time. Uh, I know you're, they're going to announce your fight date, I believe, on Tuesday. So, uh, yeah, we look forward to that. And what, what can fans expect uh, from this fight? Huge, huge fight. It's going to be a uh, big performance for me and going to bring all the fireworks and show everyone that I'm back and I'm coming for them belts. Brilliant. Chantel, good luck. Thank you. Thank you.